Heartland Song, who's going to lead this workshop, Connecting to the Land Through Song. Tiu Strat is a first generation Canadian of British and Estonian descent. She lives in the land of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Huron Wendat, in the land of the first peoples of the Williams Treaty. Tiu is an educator and an artist. She's a primary junior teacher in the public school system, where she is committed to engaging students with the natural world on a daily basis. And Tiu has over two decades of experience writing and performing songs and shares her songs to connect children with the land on her website, landheartsong.com. So with that, Tiu, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you uh, to Justine and to Catherine. Uh, for welcoming me into the space and welcoming us all into the space. And thank you to all of you who are joining tonight. Um, as uh, experiencing the COVID experience at this stage and uh, gathering as educators on a Friday night, um, I, I think uh, I'm feeling very grateful to each of you for choosing to spend some of your time here. So um, I'd like to start um, by asking if you would mind introducing yourself in the chat, um, where you're joining from today. And I'd be interested if you could share a number with me. Um, and the number would indicate what's your comfort level in singing with children. So uh, one would be, I'm terrified, uh, not something I do. Uh, five would be, I'm somewhat comfortable. And a 10 would be very comfortable and I'm engaging with this all the time in my practice. So I'll just give you a minute. Um, and I put in this visual here of the circle with the hearts because um, initially I was gonna be doing this last, um, last spring uh, in person and we were gonna gather all in circles. So I would like you to imagine that one of those hearts is there for you and we're all gathered together in circle. Uh, this evening to learn together. And I'm just going to spend just a moment looking in the chat to get to know you. Oh, this is great. Oh, wow, we have somebody from Turkey joining us. This is great. Wonderful. Okay. So this is actually great. I was hoping we would get a range. So thank you all for sharing with me. Um, so let's, uh, I, I've, I believe we'll have something for all of you. Um, this, uh, I'm gonna get into in just a moment what we're doing, but I've asked you all to in, uh, introduce yourself. So I'll start with just introducing me. You know, we already had a lovely introduction, which was great. I really appreciate that. Um, so my name is Tiu. To you, Strut, I go by the pronouns she and her, and I'm a first generation Canadian Estonian, uh, uh, Canadian, sorry, excuse me, with uh, Estonian and British uh, heritage. Um, I'm joining you right now from my backyard. Uh, I live in the land of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron Wendat, in the land of the First Peoples of the Williams Treaty. And my family comes to this land, or I specifically come to this land. On my mom's side, my mom came uh, from Britain when uh, she was a young adult uh, for new opportunity and adventure. And my dad came to this land when he was three years old. And my grandpa, uh, before he passed away, he told me the story of um, coming to this land. Um, they were displaced from Estonia after the Second World War. And they arrived here really looking for a new, a new home. And they, um, he told me the story of um, how they moved a fair bit when they first arrived, nothing quite felt right. And then they landed in uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario. And my grandpa told me the story of arriving there and being at the train station and watching this man leave the train station with a fishing rod in hand and 
Um, my grandfather watched as he cast his line into um, this lake and he brought in a beautiful fish and he cast his line again. And he brought in another beautiful fish and my grandfather said how he just watched this man bring in all these fish and he said, you know, at that point he knew his family had found home. For him, he just in that moment, he knew that this was the place where um, our family was settled. And so I think about that moment and how that was really um, a side of my family coming to this land and how the family is spread out across the land. Um, where I now live here with my family is much further south. But no matter where we've been in this land, we have um, reap the, the benefits of uh, this beautiful land that we live in and we've come to call this place home in our family and so it's with great gratitude um, I feel in my heart to the first peoples of this land for the bounty the beauty um, that was found when my family came and um, and the sense of home that we have found here so that's how I come to this land. Um, I live here. I teach in the public board. Um, I'm a mother to two beautiful children, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. And I'm a songwriter. And I've been writing songs since I was a teenager. And um, when we had kids, I started um, finding a voice in uh, writing songs, um, connecting with, uh, I guess, a child's mind. Um, and I share a lot of that work uh, on my blog at my website, Land Heart Song. So um, today, tonight, um, just to give you a bit of an overview of what to expect, I'm going to share some activities that I love to do when I work with children, and I'm going to invite you to put on a kid's hat, to be uh, a kid with me, and to experience the activities as I would do them with children. Um, as an opportunity to allow you to explore your own voice, um, to support you in feeling more comfortable uh, for those who are sitting around four or five and using your voice with children. Um, I hope to leave you inspired um, to use your voice and to support children in using their voice as you work with them in the land. Uh, I'd like to share an approach to songwriting that I think is uh, as an approach we can all use in the land with children that you uh, could bring back to your practice. And I want to also share with you um, how I use song uh, to support an inquiry process in working with children in the land. Um, if you do have questions, I invite you to put them in the chat and I'll check in and I'll ask Justine and Catherine that if I um, miss something that comes up, if you could just uh, kind of alert me to that there, but I definitely would like to have some, uh, if you if something comes up that uh, you share it and uh, and I'd like to know about that. So without further ado, let's start exploring. So I'm going to lead us through a couple of activities right now. Um, in my practice, I bring children outside uh, for our learning and um, I've developed a routine that we start with and um, this routine I have developed based on teachings that have been shared with me by Hopi Lovell Martin. Hopi Lovell Martin is uh, uh, a very kind man. He is of Lenny Lenape, Britain and European descent. He is an educator. He is a PhD candidate with OISE. Um, and I have had the opportunity to learn with him on many occasions. And he shared teachings with me about starting in gratitude and starting, um, uh, starting by saying thank you to acknowledge the land and saying thank you. And I've, um, I've got some links here. Uh, www.edgeofthebush.ca is his website where he is sharing um, his work. He also has a blog called Acknowledging Land um, that is posted on the York Region Nature Col Col York Region Nature Collaborative website, and he also hosts uh, monthly workshops, um, land as teacher workshops with the York Region Nature Collaborative, and those are great opportunities to learn with him. And um, 
two beautiful birds just went flying by. And, uh, and in, um, on his website and in the Acknowledging Land, he talks about working with children and starting by um, saying hello and saying thanks. So I'm gonna lead us through um, an activity. Imagine that we're all in circle. Um, I'm gonna ask you to put on your kid hat now. And um, depending on where you are, if you're joining us and you're outside, then um, I welcome you to connect with the land that you're in right now. And I place myself in my backyard. So if you'd like to connect with the land that I'm in, uh, you can do that too. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by warming up our bodies and warming up our voices. So I'm gonna invite you to reach down, stretch your body down and reach down and feel the earth. Feel the earth that's holding us here and we can say, hello earth. Thank you earth. And I'm just gonna pause for one second because often what I'll do is I start working with children. And this is again, a teaching from Hopi about starting to learn to use language. And this is something I've also been learning with Jody Johnston of the Chippewas of Georgina Island who works in my school board about using language. And so I will share with children how, you know, I work with young children and so I talk with them about how some families, like my family, I explain my families come from another part of the world um, and we live here. But for some families, it doesn't matter how far you go back, their families have lived in this land. And when other people came from other parts of the world, well, things started changing. And one of the things that changed is some people opened up schools and the people who opened up schools, they... Um, spoke English and they spoke French. And that's why we're learning English and French in schools. But long before those people came, the families who've never come from another part of the world, they've been in this land and they have their languages. And the language in the land where I live um, here, the way they say thank you is miigwech. So I'd like to share with you the word miigwech. And what I share with kids is, that's the language this land knows best. So as we're saying hello to the land and as we're saying thank you to the land, um, let's say it in the language the land knows best. So we're gonna reach down to the ground again. Sorry, that was a bit of a segue. <laughs> I meant to say that before I got y'all in your kid hats and got you reaching down to the ground, but let's do it again. Kid hats are on. We're gonna reach down to the ground and say, hello earth, miigwech earth. And we've had a nice stretch down our legs and down our backs. And let's just warm up our bodies with a nice simple song. Home, shoulders, knees, and toes. And to make sure we all do it together, let's count in together. We go one, two, three, four. Nice and slow. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. Eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. And now I'd like to take your hands out and I'd like you to stretch up from the earth. And as your hands come up, I want you to reach out and see if you can tickle a tree. I've got a beautiful maple over here and a beautiful cedar. And I'm gonna stretch, 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 stretch and see if I can tickle those trees. Oh, and now my body's a little bit more warmed up. I'm a bit more loosened up. Do you know what? Let's do that song again. Let's do it faster together. One, two, three, four. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes, ears, mouth and nose. That was good. And now, oh, look at the sky. What a sky we have tonight. There's just a few clouds that are soaring through the sky. Do you know what? Let's reach up. Let's reach up as high as we can possibly reach up. Let's stretch up. Let's see if we can touch some of that blue. Feel that sun warming on your hands. And do you know what? See if you could grab some of those clouds up there. Did you get one? Let's bring it down. Let's smear it on the earth like it's icing. Oh, our bodies are really warmed up now. You know what? They're so warm up. I bet you we could go a little bit faster together. Ready? 
One, two, three, four. Head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes, head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes, ears, mouth and nose. Well, my body's all warmed up. You know what though? I'd like to take you guys on a little walk because where I live, there's a beautiful creek just in behind here. But before we go on a, on a walk to the creek, do you know what I really think we should do? Is I think we should have a little bite to eat. So I'm gonna invite you to have a banana. Now, eating a banana, the first thing you've gotta do is you've gotta peel your banana, then you've gotta chop your banana, and then we're gonna smush the banana, and we're gonna eat the banana, and then we're gonna go bananas. Okay, can you guys do that with me? We gotta make sure we've got some food in our belly before I take you on this walk. So here we go, are you ready? If you don't know what the first round, you'll get it by the second round. Here we go, we go one, two, three, four. Peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, chop, banana, chop, chop, banana, chop, banana, chop, chop, banana, smush, banana, smush, smush, banana, smush, banana, smush, smush, banana, eat, banana, eat, eat, banana, eat, banana, eat, eat, banana, go, banana, go, go, bananas, go, bananas, go, go, bananas. Well, our bellies are full. Come on, let's go for a walk. And so we'll walk down the street and I'm gonna steal from the Smurfs now because the kids just love this little song. If we go, a la 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 did you see that? Did you see what I just saw? Over there on my neighbor's front lawn, there's a little animal. This little animal has the cutest little paws you've ever seen, covered in black fur, has two little small ears and a bushy, bushy tail. I see a squirrel. And you're never gonna guess what this squirrel has in his hands. Did you guess a banana? That's right. This squirrel has a banana in his hands. Why don't we pretend we're the squirrel? Let's get into that small little body. I want you to feel your little, little paws. I want you to feel that you're covered in fur and in your hands, you've got a banana. Ready? One, two, three, four. A pew, banana, pew, pew, banana. Peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, chop, banana, chop, chop, banana, chop, banana, chop, chop, banana, smush, banana, smush, smush, banana, smush, banana, smush, smush, banana, eat, banana, eat, eat, banana, eat, banana, eat, eat, banana, and go, banana, go, go, banana, go, banana, go, go, banana. Can you believe that? That just happened. We just saw a squirrel eating a banana. There's funny things going on here. Let's keep going to the creek. Come on with me. La 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 I don't believe this. Do you see that? Over there, not too close to us. Kind of thank goodness because I don't know that I want to be too close to this animal. This is a big animal. This animal is also covered in fur and it's got big claws. Do you know what I see? It's a bear. And guess what he has in his hands? A banana. So let's get into our bear bodies. Are you ready? I want you to feel your body get so big and you're covered in fur. And in these clawed hands, you've got a banana. Are you ready? Together. One, two, three, four. Peel, banana. Peel, peel, banana. Peel, banana. Peel, peel, banana. A chop. Banana, chop, chop, banana, chop, 
banana, chop, chop, banana, and smush, banana, smush, mush, banana, smush, banana, smush, smush, banana, eat banana, eat, eat banana, eat banana, eat, eat banana, go banana, go, go banana, go banana, go, go banana. And obviously we could keep going for quite a while with that. I think you guys got it. But hopefully through enough repetition, we all know the song now. I'm going to invite you to uh, take off your kid hat for a moment. Um, and I hope you had fun with me doing that. And I hope that you allowed yourself the opportunity to explore your voice. Because that's what this is all about. Singing is about exploring. Our voice. Um, and I think you probably also noticed I started with some very simple songs. Um, I don't want to ever assume that they're songs that people would know, but um, they're songs that are from my childhood. And the reason why I start with those songs with you um, is because that's also where I start with children. And it's also where I suggest starting yourself because your childhood songs are where you feel most comfortable. The songs that you sang when you were a little kid are going to be the places where you feel most comfortable sharing your voice with others. And so I started with um, Head and Shoulders, Knees and Toes, which is a song that I learned when I was just a little girl. And then the banana song, uh, the banana song is a camp song that was taught to me by Jennifer Stacy, an amazing educator here in Ontario, a uh, music educator. And why I use that song, and in particular why I've used that song uh, this year um, in Ontario, well, in my board, we haven't been allowed to sing. Um, and I've also been teaching the French program is that um, it's not technically singing, we're chanting. Um, and uh, the other thing is that it's very easy to do in French as well, um, to translate and just the verb and then banan. So we've had a ton of fun with that song. And as I do that with kids, um, I invite them, you know, we're going on a walk and what did, oh my gosh, can you believe what's over there? Excuse me. And I'll ask the kids to share with me what they think is there. And the way that I approach it is, um, no matter what they say goes. You know, we've done this with flamingos. Uh, we've done, uh, we've peeled bananas with crayfish, um, all sorts of animals. And I'm just using that um, to, the banana song um, in terms of engaging children in the land is it's inviting them to consider who is sharing this land with us. Who are the animals that we share this land with? And to get them thinking about it. And if we keep doing this over time and children are looking more closely in the land, it's a nice little way to kind of connect in and see how their understanding, their environmental literacy is growing because they're looking more closely and they're making connections with the land and the animals that are here that we share the land with. Um, so, I chose those songs because I feel very comfortable with them. And I think childhood songs are the way to start. And then what I think about is I think about music at a very elemental level, the very basics. So inviting children, and these are the things that I think about. How can we explore a fast voice and a slow voice? That's what we were doing with head and shoulders, knees and toes. Um, and then with the banana song, well, really, as we put ourselves into the body of any sort of animal, we're exploring all of it. We can explore a high voice, a low voice, a loud voice, a soft voice, and of course, a silly voice. Every child needs the opportunity to explore that. So those are all the things that I'm thinking about when we're in the land and I'm engaging children with song. And why? Why song? Why use song when working with the children 
with children in the land. And this is where I hope to kind of fill you up with some inspiration if you needed some. When we work with song in the land with children, we're allowing children the opportunity to develop a relationship with their own voice. To find out what voice do they have in them? We're allowing children the opportunity to explore the range of their voice. How high can my voice go? How low? How loud? How soft? How fast? How slow? And every child loves exploring how silly their voice can be. When we work with song, while we're working with children in the land, it also allows children the opportunity to build confidence and understanding that their voice matters. I was thinking actually, uh, and a, a memory came to me um, not too long ago in this past week as I was preparing for this, this uh, one year, a few years ago, I was working in the kindergarten program and I remember there was a boy who, um, who was a selective mute. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't speak, but we would go outside and we would sing. And I honestly, I can't remember why, but at one point, I think we maybe took a recording for the homeroom teacher of the kids underneath this beautiful maple tree singing, take me out to the ball game. And it was really remarkable because the child that you could hear louder than any other child in the group was the child who we had not heard um, speak once in the classroom. Singing allows children the opportunity to develop a sense of belonging and community. It gives them an opportunity to hear their voice with other voices. And I always tell children when we sing together, when we bring our voices together, we're making a voice that this world has never heard before. All of our voices together and we make a beautiful gift, a voice that's never been heard. And each one of you belongs in as a part of this, it wouldn't be this voice if you weren't in this group with us. And so singing together, it allows children the opportunity to, to develop an inherent sense of belonging and to develop a sense of community. I also like to use song to spark curiosity and looking closely when we're outdoors. And I find that I don't know what it is. I haven't put my finger on it. I think it has to do with when we sing, it's from the heart. But when we sing about looking closely at the land and making predictions and observations, we're engaging through our hearts in inquiry. And so I find it's a really valuable tool um, for my work in supporting children and developing a relationship with the land. And I just thought I'd ask a, a number of people um, in the chat uh, indicated they have a great sense of comfort in using their voice with children. So I've offered what I have to share about why I think it's so important that we use song when working with children in the land. But I'm gonna take this as a little cue to check in with the chat. If you'd like to add anything more, um, I'd welcome you to do that. Okay. So I'm coming back to this idea again of singing as exploring. I think one of the things that will really help us all is if we shift our thinking around singing. I think that we've come to a point where um, there's a bit of a thought of, I can sing or I can't sing. And I'd like to invite you to consider that singing isn't about um, sounding a certain way. That's one narrative. <clears throat> that our voice needs to sound a certain way. We need to be able to carry a melody um, for us to be able to sing. I think we really need to shift that narrative because if we think about it 
singing is a way for us to explore our voice. It's an opportunity for us to develop a relationship with our voice, to develop a sense of belonging and community with others. And think about how if the children that we work with develop that sense of connection with their voice and that it belongs and that it has a place. Think about how no matter what they choose to do as they find their way through this life, if they have that understanding that their voice matters, we're going to see that, um, I think that we're going to, it, it, it's a potential, it has the potential to support more voices being heard and not just the voices, not just the voices that can carry a tune, right? We want all of our children to grow up understanding that their voice matters and has a place. And that when it's time for them to stand up and have their voice heard, they know their range, they know their voice and they know how to use it. <clears throat> so how do we do that? We share our voice with the children. We model for them. We give permission to ourselves to share our voice and in turn give them permission to share and explore their voice. And, um, you know, it, one kind of final thought that seems to want to be shared at this point is that, um, when we're working with children in the land and we want to support them in developing a relationship with the land and support them with developing a relationship with understanding their self and developing community, um, nobody is paying us to be the best singer in the crowd. <laughs> our work is supporting the children. And so when we share our voice, um, it's one of the biggest tools we have in our toolbox. So that's my little spark of inspiration to encourage you to explore your voice and to explore your voice with the children in your lives. I'm just gonna check the chat here because I thought I saw some things got poked in. Expression through song and dance is liberating for children. Thank you. Increase more understanding of connecting the land we are living on. Absolutely. And I like to rewrite songs with my students based on what's happening outdoors. So the green grass grows all around became the snow white fell all around when we sang the song in the winter. I got the kids thinking about what is around during the winter and how we could include those ideas in song. That's awesome. Oh, I love that. These are so wonderful. A lot of the kids, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble scrolling. A lot of the kids I work with are new to Canada. Songs about this land are a great way to spark discussions about what is the same and different about here in the countries they've arrived from. Thank you. Absolutely. And I love the banana song. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. Those are great points. I appreciate that. All right. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd give you a moment to reflect. What childhood songs come to mind for you? Like when you think back to your childhood, what are the songs that you're like, oh, I loved that song was I, when I was a kid. That's a tool in your toolbox just waiting to be pulled out. Maybe just take a moment and write that down if you feel sparked. And then as you know, we move away from this time together, consider how you might use them in your practice. So now we're going to switch gears and I'd like to share with you an experience that happened this past year. It was uh, quite a fun experience. I've got to say teaching during COVID has been quite the challenge. I think it's um, forced us all to do things in different ways that we haven't done before. Um, 
where I am, we haven't been able to sing all year long. Um, so, uh, so I've been doing a lot of work with body percussion and that's turned into um, a songwriting approach that we use. So I thought I'd share it with you because I think it might be something that you might find valuable. So you see here, um, these are flashcards. And then this is a book here, Giving Thanks, a Native American Good Morning Message. This is written by Chief Jake Swamp um, and illustrated by Erwin Printup Jr. So as I mentioned, the beginning of the year, we'd establish a routine, we gather and school and we greet the day. And um, for the French Immersion pro uh, Program, I teach grade one French Immersion this year. It's great for um, building vocabulary in the land. So we say hello and thank you to everything. And I share the teaching given to me by Hopi, excuse me. And I also, this is a great uh, picture book to share. Um, it's uh, Chief Jake Swamp is a contemporary Mohawk chief and it's a beautifully illustrated book um, that uh, explains um, his uh, tradition of beginning the day in gratitude. So in the fall, you know, and even to the state, even when we're online right now, where I am, we're online, um, we uh, began by saying hello and giving thanks and naming, naming the land that we're in. Um, <clears throat> so as the fall continued, we started um, looking at the rhythm behind the words. So rosh, the rocks, how it's like a taw. Um, and then we started um, just playing around with how we were able to name the land, stringing four words together to create um, like a line of music. And if you're not, if you're seeing these music notes right now and you're going, mm, no, like that's a bit beyond where I'm at, don't even worry about the music notes. Just think four hearts, four beats, like four heartbeats one part of the land um, that we're naming and putting four of them together. And then for those words, we would just use body percussion, which is how can I, um, how can I use my body to make sound? So brush, branch, face, yell, that would be very basic, just clapping our hands and we can explore. And we started exploring all the different ways that we might make like body percussion routines based on the vocabulary that we were learning in the land. And we did this for um, quite a while and we had a lot of fun with it. Children started grabbing things that were on the ground to use them like they were instruments. So loose parts were like uh, wood chips and sticks that they were finding. So how might we use those to make percussion? And then um, as we were nearing kind of uh, December, um, it was like, oh yeah, we usually kind of do like a performance around this time. We're not gonna be able to do that this year. Um, by gathering people, but maybe we could write a song together. So I kind of put all the words that, this is grade one level. Um, I put all the words that um, we had been working on. I put them on a list and I invited children to think about on that day, what were you feeling most grateful for in your heart? And then they got into groups of four and then they created a line of music. And we had our song begin with miigwech merci pour tout, which means thank you, thank you for everything. And so um, groups of four kids came up with their special line. They put body percussion to it and then we put it all together and we had written this song. And it was a beautiful process and you can definitely see we're working outdoors because some of this on the left <laughs> is me rewriting it. I learned that when I am putting things on chart paper and bringing them outside, if I am going to use them multiple times, I do it in Sharpie pen. Um, because when I don't, like I did on the right, and I use my Crayola markers, well, all it takes is a little bit of rain and it all gets uh, wiped out and then I've got to do it all over again. So this became our song. And um, kids uh, work together to develop a body percussion routine to go with it. And um, it was a really beautiful offering. It was our way of saying thanks to the land that we were learning in. And it was really neat because in the spring, the land that I teach in, um, there are some beautiful sh uh, sugar maples. And um, we began learning about uh, 
um, harvesting maple sap. And here's some pictures showing the sap that was harvested. And then um, I brought it home and boiled it down and uh, showed them the maple syrup and the wow in kids' faces when they were like, that's maple syrup, like maple syrup came from this tree. And I suggested, or I just asked, how might we say thank you um, to this beautiful tree? Um, and this tree, the children had named Sugar. Um, how might we say thank you to Sugar? And a child raised her hand and she said, why don't we write a song? And so that was, for me, it was a really special day because um, we were able to apply everything that we'd been learning all year. And here you'll see the lyrics are on the left, um, Miigwech Sugar. So the song went, Miigwech Sugar, Miigwech Sugar, Miigwech Pour La Sève. La sève fait le sirop yummy, yummy, yum. Merci, sugar, merci, sugar, merci pour la sève. Tu es mon ami, yay, sugar. So thank you, sugar, thank you, sugar, thank you for the sap. The sap makes syrup, yummy, yummy, yum. Thank you, sugar, thank you, sugar, thank you for the sap. You are my friend, yay, sugar. Meaning yay, sugar, the tree. That was a really, that was probably, that was probably the best day this year. It was just such a heartwarming moment. And, you know, in 20 minutes, they, they banged out a song and uh, had actions to go with it. That's a picture of the shadows doing the actions uh, for this song that they had written uh, as a gift for this beautiful tree who taught us such a beautiful thing. So some ideas there to support you in considering how you might uh, approach songwriting um, with children as you work in the land. And the final thing I wanted to share with you tonight uh, is a big part of what I do is I continue writing songs and I share them. Um, this past school year, I've been sharing a tree song cycle and these are songs um, to support inquiry. So. I write songs to inspire children to look closely when we sing them together to inspire them to make some predictions about what, what we might, uh, excuse me, what we might find when we're in the land. We keep singing them as time goes on so that they have a way of sharing through song what observations they're making as we're in the land. And um, we keep singing them because we love them and they're fun. And um, it can show me how they're starting, their relationship with the land is shifting. So this here, these songs can all be uh, found on my blog, um, which I did see was put in the chat, www.landheartsong.com. And I wanted to share with you, I think this is gonna play, but I'm gonna try to skip it. because We're not gonna have time for it because we're gonna sing a song. So this is the song um, that's coming up next in the tree song cycle. And this song is called Thank and this song I love because it's gratitude. It's sharing gratitude for the trees. And you know, in June, it gets awful hot. Um, in September, it's often awful hot. And so to say thank you tree for being there for me and for growing your leaves so broad. But also this song invites um, a good amount of silly. As we think about Who's enjoying this tree with me? So I did say in the write-up, um, if you've got an instrument, you're welcome to bring it with you. So if you have your instrument handy, why don't you grab it? Because I am going to grab my guitar. We're going to sing this song together. Uh, my hands are a little cold. It's a little chilly here. The sun's going down. So I'm going to do my best. Um, to sing the song with you. I'll sing it with you. It's a pretty catchy melody, so I think you'll get it pretty quick. And uh, <clears throat> I think you'll get the hang of it and we'll have some opportunity for audience participation. Cause I'd like you to maybe as you're singing the song, if you can look out your window or maybe you're outside and tell me what animals are enjoying these trees with you tonight. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for growing your leaves so broad. Thank you, tree, for 
being here for me for the shade from the hot sun. And I've got a friend right here. Squirrel has appeared. And we've got a song for you. Thank you for all you do. It goes. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for growing your leaves so broad. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for the shade from the hot sun. And I've got a friend right here, a cardinal has appeared, and we've got a song for you. So thank you for all you do. It goes So I'm going to look in the chat now and see if anybody has a suggestion for an animal that we might share this tree with. A chickadee is a great one. Thank you. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for growing your leaves so broad. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for the shade from the hot sun. And I've got a friend right here. The chickadee has appeared. And we've got a song for you. Thank you for all you do. It goes dee 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 dee. I see we've got a lot of owl fans. That'll be a hoot to do, right? Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for growing your leaves so broad. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for the shade from the hot sun. And I've got a friend right here. An owl has appeared, and we've got a song for you. So thank you for all you do. Oh, I'm super pumped there's a piano. That's super cool. I don't think I can see everybody, but I hope if you have not gathered an instrument yet, this is a time for you to pick up your spoons or to grab your salt shaker or anything that makes sound that makes you happy. And let's do a round. I see we've got a robin, a panda, and a fox. So it's gonna be choose your own adventure. And we'll do more one more round together. Ready? Bah, bah, bah. Thank you, tree, for being here for me, for growing your leaves so broad. Thank you, tree. Being here for me for the shade from the hot sun. And I've got some friends right here. A robin, fox, and panda have appeared. And we've got a song for you. Thank you for all you do. I'm just going to listen this time. <laughs> no, he's good. <laughs> Go for it. The shade from the hot sun. I 
Yay, that was awesome. That was super fun. There you go. So this is a super fun song to do with kids as we're, um, depending on where you are in your learning journey with them, you might use this as a way, as your starting time with them to give out gratitude and to just kind of gather some information um, about, you know, where are they at? Where's their environmental literacy about who they think might be sharing the land with them? I agree, lovely voices and duet. That was super cool, I love that. Thank you, Jade. Um, and then it also could be, I've used this also last year virtually where I had children draw pictures of who is, who is joining them in the land and they would send in pictures. And then um, last year we were asynchronous. So I'd record the song with their pictures, but this year we were synchronous, you know, it's like amazing. Yeah, let's sing it together. My, my favorite was the butterfly, right? Because these things just get you thinking, well, what does that butterfly sound like? How, we might, how might we do that? Um, so these are resources, uh, this, uh, chord chart, the lyrics are going to be sent out with you afterwards, um, after this session. Um, I also will be posting this one in the next month on my blog, and I have a whole tree song cycle there for you. And in the following year, I'm going to be releasing songs that are connecting with the animals that we share this land with. So those are resources that um, I would love if they work for you to share them with children. Go for it. I also have videos so you could share the videos or you can share your song and you can do it with instruments and you can do it without and it's all there for you to support exploring song with children. Um, that was a cool jam. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll just look and see if there's any burning questions. Oh, sorry. If there's any questions that are, I can't seem to get to the chat, but oh. Looks like we're okay. I was aware that there's another session that's starting. And so I did want to think about giving you guys time to go to the bathroom if you needed to between now and the next one. Um, so just before we part, I would just like to um, invite you to, oh, sorry, I'm having a little, I'm trying to move something out of the way. Um, to consider now, is your comfort level feeling, have, have we moved along the spectrum? Um, in terms of where you're at. And if you want to share that in the chat, you're more than welcome to. But if you just want to have that kind of reflection piece for yourself, has anything shifted? What might be a takeaway that you would like to take with you before, um, before we part? Um, and I'm just going to share, uh, I am going to go look in the chat, but I understand there might be people who want to slink off. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, I would love to connect with you more. I'm so passionate about this work and about learning. And I think there's so many of us out there who are doing such amazing work. And so I'd like to continue learning with you. So there's my email, there's my website, and I'm trying to use Instagram and Twitter, uh, social media. Um, and uh, I, ah, sorry, I'm pressing buttons because I'm trying to scroll up and I can't. Um, Oh, you guys are so, oh, Jade, we moved you from a one to a seven. That's amazing. You jumped on the piano and jammed. That's so awesome. And thank you. Oh, thanks so much for the music. Oh, thanks guys. I'm so glad and please um, feel free to reach out. 